So to start with this lecture, let us see what are the different types of reaction which we can see on phase diagrams. So there are various types of reactions like first one is isomorphous now isomorphous is a reaction in which we get if we are at higher temperature we are observing the system at higher temperature we will have liquid and by cooling liquid we get a solid and the reverse is also true that means if we heat the solid then we will get liquid okay so this is a isomorphous system but in between these two let's say for example if we are heating alpha then before reaching to the liquid zone we will have a zone of mixture that is L plus alpha now isomorphous system is a system in which two solids are completely soluble in each other in the example of isomorphous system is copper nickel phase diagram so if you remember the phase diagram of copper nickel in that diagram we were having three zones liquid liquid plus solid and solid so we have only one type of solid over here that means copper and nickel are completely soluble in each other so that is nothing but isomorphous system now there are other types of reactions The next is a eutectic reaction. Now see obviously the name of the phase diagrams are given based on what type of reactions are observed on it. So if we can observe eutectic reaction on any phase diagram, we will say that it is eutectic phase diagram. Alright. Now the definition of eutectic reaction is suppose we are observing the system at high temperature we will have liquid and when we cool it down we will get two different solids mixture of two different solids and the reverse is also true that means if we heat it if we heat this alpha plus beta we will get liquid the important thing about eutectic reaction is when we are heating this alpha plus beta and then when we get liquid in between these two we do not have any phase of mixture that means we do not have any liquid plus solid region we directly get a liquid and when we cool it down again it does not pass through any zone where we have solid plus liquid we can directly get alpha plus beta so in general if we want to define a eutectic reaction we can say it is liquid 
on cooling it gives us solid 1 plus solid 2 and the reverse is also true the example of eutectic phase diagram is latin phase diagram all right and the general shape of eutectic phase diagram i am drawing over here the general shape will be like this if this is the phase diagram then on the diagram we will have this type of zones where this zone is nothing but alpha plus beta and this is liquid this is alpha this is beta this is l plus alpha and this is l plus beta okay this will be the general shape of eutectic phase diagram if we consider this point then for this particular composition if we heat the solid then after this point we will directly get liquid it will not pass through any solid plus liquid region for this region it is okay that it is passing through liquid plus alpha here it is passing through liquid plus beta but for this particular composition it will not pass through any solid plus liquid region and this point is called eutectic point and it is denoted by E. So this is how eutectic phase diagram look like. We will come back to this phase diagram and we will see in detail some important characteristics of eutectic phase diagram. The next reaction is eutectoid reaction. The definition of eutectoid reaction is, I am writing the general definition. It says, if at high temperature we have some solid, then if we cool it down, we will get mixture of two different solids. So that is solid 2 plus solid 3. Remember that these two solids, solid 2 and solid 3 are different than the solid 1. And the reverse is also true. That means if we heat solid 1 plus solid 2 mixture, we will get a different solid which is solid 1. And this is called eutectoid reaction. The example of this reaction is on iron iron carbide diagram we have gamma austenite to alpha plus Fe3C this type of reaction we can observe on Fe Fe3C diagram iron iron carbide diagram if we look at the general layout of this phase diagram it looks like this it looks it looks similar to the eutectic phase diagram but the difference is now we have instead of liquid here we have some other type of solid for example here we can have gamma we can have alpha and beta over here this may be alpha plus beta this may be alpha plus gamma and this may be beta plus gamma so this is the general layout and of course this cannot be the end of the diagram because here at high temperature also we have some solid so still there is a scope of heating this metal and uh, there is a scope to get liquid so in detail we will see this reaction on iron iron carbide diagram and at that time you will understand uh, where it falls the next reaction is
peritectic reaction And the definition of peritectic reaction says it is at some high temperature suppose we have liquid plus solid one then by cooling it we get solid two and the reverse is also True. That means if we heat this solid 2, we will get liquid plus solid 1. Again, the example of peritectic reaction we can observe on Fe Fe3C diagram where we have liquid plus delta on cooling uses gamma austenite and the reverse. If we look at the general layout of peritectic reaction, it looks like this. Okay, so suppose this is delta, this is gamma. So this must be delta plus gamma this is liquid so this must be gamma plus liquid this is liquid plus delta and this is the pyrotactic reaction that means L plus delta gives us gamma and this is how pyrotactic reaction looks like we will see the details on iron iron carbide diagram so these are the reactions different reactions which we can observe on phase diagram isomorphous where two solids are completely soluble in each other eutectic where we can get solid directly from liquid without passing through liquid plus solid region and where we have two solids alpha plus beta that means two metals are not completely soluble in each other then we have eutectoid reaction where again uh, two metals are not completely soluble in each other but how it is different than eutectic is at high temperature we can get solid one and on cooling we can get two different solids peritectic reaction is liquid plus solid one gives us solid two now next let us talk about microstructures on phase diagrams So let's start with microstructures on isomorphous system taking example of copper nickel phase diagram. So let me quickly draw the rough sketch of copper nickel system earlier also we have seen how copper nickel system looks like so this is the composition weight percentage nickel here we have temperature degree celsius and this is solidus line and this is liquidus line we have liquid here we have l plus alpha here and we have alpha here this is the melting point of pure copper and this is the melting point of pure nickel now let's take uh, any one composition value arbitrary composition value let's say i'm taking this composition value over here somewhere over here and if i draw a vertical line for this composition it shows that if I heat this particular composition this will be the path and this is how the alloy will behave at different 
temperature. So let's take some points. Let's say this is point A. This is point B. And here we have point C. And now let's see microstructures on these points. So at point A, as we can see that we have only liquid, we do not have any solid particles in it. So I am drawing the microstructure for A somewhere over here. We can draw it in a circle or a square in any shape. Here I am showing that it is only liquid and I will write here L. Now we know that once if we are cooling this alloy from point A and once the liquidus line is crossed there will be some solid particles inside this alloy. Right. So in between this liquid region we will have some small solid particles which will nucleate. Okay, so this is a different subject how it nucleates that is solidification of metal but for now we can just take it as that some solid particles are coming into existence once the alloy reaches to the liquidus line. Right, so after this line as we move down that means as we decrease the temperature the solid particles will grow in size it will grow in size so let's say i have reached to this point and i am observing what is the microstructure over here then in that case i will see some solid particles inside the liquid region remember that these solid particles are surrounded by liquid region so i will say this is liquid l and these are the solid particles of course they are the solid particles of alpha in this case so we can say these are alpha solid particles right now as we move down let's say if i am observing the microstructure at b prime which is near to the solidus line then in that case this solid particles will be bigger in size okay so let me draw again one microstructure at b prime so i will draw it like this then these are bigger in size these particles have grown this is surrounded by liquid region and these are alpha particles now once this alloy has crossed the solidus line we know that after this line we have only solid right we do not have any liquid portion that means this liquid region all the liquid region is converted into solid particles actually what is happening while solidification is nucleation is taking place somewhere over here and then there is a conversion of this liquid region into the solid region and that is why the solid region will grow in size all right so now if we draw the microstructure at point c then we will have only solids and it will be like this these are the solid particles fully grown in size these are alpha no liquid inside Right, and these are called different grains of alpha. Right, these are different grains of alpha. We have already studied crystal structures. Uh, so, if we want to define grains, we can define it like these grains are nothing but they are a group of unit cells having some particular orientation for example here in this grain we will have a group of unit cells of similar orientation whereas this will be group of unit cells having 
similar orientation but different than this likewise all these grains will have different orientation unit cells group of unit cells same within the grain but different than the adjusting grain and this grain boundaries they are nothing but okay first of all these are called grain boundaries it is separating different grains but this grain boundaries are nothing but because of the mismatch in the orientation of this unit cells and this unit cells there will be a gap here at every place where two groups are coming besides each other okay coming close to each other at that time because of the orientation difference here there will be a gap although the solid particles will be fully grown they will not be able to mix into each other so this gap is nothing but grain boundary so we can say this is a boundary okay so these are the grain boundaries and this grain boundaries are nothing but it is a gap because of the orientation difference between these two groups of unit cells so the, it is actually a gap okay so these are called different grains and these are called grain boundaries All right so this type of structure we will be able to see on copper nickel phase diagram so at the room temperature if you observe we will have only different grains of solids there will not be any liquid region and these grains will be touching each other but there will be a slight gap in between now okay now let's see we have seen the general layout of eutectic phase diagram let's discuss a little bit more about it let me draw a rough sketch again now as informed earlier in case of eutectic phase diagram we have a point or we have a composition value for which if we heat the solid it will directly give us liquid here it will be solid but it will directly give us liquid it will not pass through liquid plus solid region but in case of eutectic diagram the solids are not completely soluble so it is incomplete solution and that is why here we will have a zone of alpha plus beta and here we will have one zone alpha and here we will have beta obviously as this is alpha and this is liquid so this must be l plus alpha and l plus beta this is informed earlier also but you understand what is the meaning of this let's say we are taking this is copper silver system copper silver is also an example of eutectic phase diagram let's say this is copper silver system and we have composition percentage weight silver and let's say we are fixing a temperature somewhere over here this is x temperature let's say now for x temperature if i keep on adding silver in copper what will happen is up to this line up to this line it will form a complete solution okay there are no different solids whatever silver we are adding into the copper it will be completely soluble inside it but once we increase the amount of silver more than this value more than this value 
it will not be completely soluble in the copper and it will form two different solids alpha plus beta okay so this is how the eutectic will behave right now in this case we do not have liquid as an solid as line rather we have liquid as an solid as line but we have one more type of line over here these lines so these lines are called solvus lines here also we have solvus line right we can say that this is a solidus line this is liquidus line this is also liquidus line but these are solvus lines and this solvus lines are nothing but it is making difference between a complete solid solution and incomplete solid solution where this copper and silver are not completely soluble in each other this point is called eutectic point now thing to observe over here is for some particular compositions the system will behave let's say if i am taking some composition over here the system will behave like it will have a complete solid solution as the temperature is increased it will go through liquid plus solid region and then it will go to liquid but instead of that if i take this composition and then if i heat the solid it will have alpha plus beta initially then it will have liquid plus alpha and then it will go to liquid instead of that if i take this composition i will have alpha plus beta directly it will go to liquid again if i take this composition it will alpha it will be alpha plus beta then liquid plus beta and then liquid if i take this composition it will be beta and then al liquid plus beta and a liquid so you can see that there are different behavior of this system and that depends on what amount of silver we are adding to the copper obviously as there are different types of reactions available on a single phase diagram microstructures will be different for different composition value if i observe this reaction it will give me different microstructure if i observe this it will give me different microstructure if i observe this it will give me different microstructure and so on. so this is how eutectic system is different than isomorphous system and somewhat complicated to understand compared to isomorphous and same is the case of eutectoid system also once we understand how different microstructures are obtained on eutectic phase diagram it will be easier for us to understand different microstructures which we can observe on eutectoid phase diagram we will be able to understand it very easily okay so let's uh, end this uh, discussion in, in the next discussion we will see what are the different types of microstructures available on eutectic phase diagram